Hi everybody. In this video, I am going to explain about another type of avalanche transit time device, which is nothing but Barrett diode. Okay. So Barrett diode, which is the third type of avalanche transit time device. Barrett stands for barrier injection transit time. diode okay device or diode barrier injected transit time device barrier injection transit time device that means some barrier is going to be created inside this device when the reverse breakdown occurs able to generate a signal frequency able to generate a signal frequency 4 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz able to generate a frequency range from 4 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz low noise compared to low noise compared to the main advantage of this barrier diode is very low noise compared to the remaining two diodes what i have explained before what are the impact diode and tropad diode compared to impact diode and tropad diodes impact and tropad diodes okay it consists of P and P are sometimes we can say P and drift region and P. Okay. Consists of consists of P and P. That means the structure may be like this P type, N type and P type or it can also be like this some drift region nothing but I region P type, N type and some drift region and again P type. So the structure may be either this one or this one P type, N type, P type or P type, N type insulating material nothing but some drifting region and P type. So the majority injection is provided the majority injection is provided by punch through by punch through of intermediate region punch through of intermediate region punch through means is, what do you mean by punch through punch through is nothing but channel breakdown so used as it is mainly used as an amplifier rather than oscillator an amplifier rather than oscillator okay this is about the story behind this barrett device so barrett stands for barrier injection transit time device and it is able to generate the frequency range from 4 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz and the main advantage of this one is one is low noise compared to impact diode and tropad diodes and mainly used as an amplifier rather than oscillator it is the another advantage the construction of this barrett diode can be either p and p or it may be p type n type some insulating material and again p type the majority injection is provided by the process called punch through okay generally in the two diodes we have seen earlier impact diode and tropat diode avalanche breakdown occurs avalanche breakdown occurs but here in this particular barrett diode instead of avalanche breakdown here the process is punch through instead of avalanche breakdown punch through occurs okay instead of avalanche breakdown punch through occurs that means that suddenly the maximum amount of current flows on either sides see here 
this is the construction of this barite diode p type n type some n type silicon wafer and p type so now we are giving a positive supply to this left hand side p type and a negative supply to this p type on the right hand side so because of this positive supply this is okay but because of this negative supply to this positive to this p type region this is p type region we are giving negative supply to this so that here some reverse bias junction occurs reverse bias junction will be occurred okay that's why because of this reverse bias junction the region will be increased here and high amount of electric field will be generated as long as this voltage increases okay and we can also say uh, except this drifting region the remaining three regions we can call them as emitter base and collector so indirectly we can treating this as a transistor so that it is being used as an amplifier in fact okay so the three regions emitter which is made up of p type base which is made up of n type and this collector is which is made up of p type okay so we can also treat this as a transistor with three regions now because of the negative supply applied to this p type material what happens some reverse bias junction is being developed across this in between this p type and n type some reverse junction reverse bias junction formed so because of this what happens high amount of uh, holes and uh, electrons are being uh, uh, neutralized here and high amount of electric field is generated see here high amount of electric field is generated coming to this emitter and base junctions as it is in the forward bias condition as it is in the forward why it is forward bias condition it is positive supply is applied to the p type and normally as it is positive supply this comes into forward bias condition at this electric field is very low electric field is very low slowly as long as we are going towards the base and crosses this base junction and enters into the drifting region because of this negative supply and reverse bias condition so barrier is developed over here barrier is developed here so that high amount of electric field is generated this is what the barrier development okay hope you understand this is normal operation of this barrier diode with respect to the application of voltage and how the electric field is generated at this forward bias condition and the reverse bias condition coming to this voltage same as long uh, as we have seen in the case of impact diode in this case also i have applied a voltage which is known as punch through voltage which is known as punch through voltage see here punch through in the impact diode we have taken the voltage as breakdown voltage over which we are having the ac uh, alternating signal but here that voltage now it becomes a punch through voltage on which we are having the input ac supply <laughs> now during this positive peak as the more voltage positive voltage is applied nothing but diode enters into punch through region and a lot of charge carriers are going, going to be injected that's why injected current is more injected current is more so that the terminal current also increases and coming to this second wave for this also same repeated for this also same repeated now up to this particular point we say this is the positive resistance region okay i told you already in the avalanche transit time devices these three devices must operate in the negative resistance region so that what do you mean by negative resistance region voltage increases current decreases opposite case that is what negative resistance region negative resistance region so that they can be used as a sourcing device but here what happens it is a combination of both it is having some part of the positive resistance characteristics and as well as it enters into negative resistance characteristics and the same will be repeated okay this is what the barrier injected transit time device and its operation coming to the barrier uh, barrett specifications
varied specifications means so what could be the efficiency noise figure and frequency of uh, operation and output power of this varied we will see first one efficiency efficiency eta is equal to 1.8 percent efficiency of this uh, barrett diode is very very low compared to the previous two diodes and noise figure noise figure is 9 decibels at 6.35 gigahertz with 15 decibels Okay, noise figure is 9 decibels at 6.35 gigahertz with 15 decibels gain. Frequency of operation of this Barrett diode as I said before, see here in the beginning of this one I have explained 4 to 10 gigahertz. Frequency of operation is 4 to 10 gigahertz and output power output power that it can give is 50 milliwatts yet 4.9 gigahertz okay the output power is varied with respect to the operation of the frequency okay as it is operated from 4 to 10 gigahertz it gives different types of uh, um, power output so especially uh, 50 milliwatts is given at 4.9 gigahertz of frequency so this is what the operation and uh, construction and specifications of this barrier diode thank you